Hello and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all on good form. You joined me at the end of February 2025. It's been a couple of months since I've uploaded a video. It's been a rapid start to the year. We've been super busy. Uh, so I wanted to wait for a decent um, case study to, uh, to look at rather than just showing you regular houses all the time. So today I'm off to Blackpool to a public building it's uh, a library i'm hoping i can uh, show you the entire thing i'm just waiting on email confirmation for what i can show you whether it's just going to be the heat pumps and plant room or the whole building ultimately it is uh 20 it'll be 20 it'll be bang on 20 years old this building i think it was opened in 2004 and the plant and equipment in there will be 20 years old the boilers that we're in are Broag Quinter boilers for the gas guys out there. Uh, I remember installing them back then, um, and I remember installing two of them in a church just before my wedding. So, which will be 15 years ago. Uh, yeah, 15 years ago this year. So uh, all those boilers that are 15 to 20 years older coming to end of life. Anyway, the, uh, the 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 reason why this one's interesting is because of the setup that they've got and the setup that we've replaced it with. We've gone 100% heat pump, so this, this is a big commercial space and the whole building is now heated with heat pumps. What makes it interesting is the way it was controlled before suits a heat pump. It was a well-designed gas system. It was underfloor heating uh, downstairs in the building. There's some trench heating around the windows and I'll show you what trench heating is. Uh, I'll either vi video it when I'm there, but if I'm not allowed to video in the library, I'll. I'll drop some pictures in that I took on the survey. Uh, so underfloor heating, trench heating, and upstairs in the toilets and landing areas, there's radiators. And then all the office spaces upstairs, the individual rooms, are heat, heated with heat pumps already that are 20, 20 years old. They were put in on day one. And when I say heat pumps, if I showed you them, a lot of, the, a lot of you would think, oh, that's air conditioning. But, but most air conditioning units or air conditioning units are, are heat pumps that that is what they do they, they heat and cool so they pump heat one way or the other uh, so, so they are literally heat pumps so all those spaces are obviously okay we didn't have to do anything with them they just remained on the air con or heat pumps as we call them we replaced the two Broad quinter boilers they were 45 kilowatts each uh, so they had 90 kilowatts of heat input going into the building but we haven't replaced it with 90 kilowatts of heat pump we've replaced it with three 14 kilowatts um, so uh, 40 42 kilowatts of uh, heat input from the heat pumps so why, why have we gone hard why have we done 50 percent of what they've done well a most of the time when consultants design gas systems they'll over spec it uh, because it gives that security blanket. They also might have overspecced it for uh, intermittent heating. So when you're heating a building intermittently, i.e. turning it on, heating the place up, and then at night letting it go cold and then heating it up again, you've got to add a percentage on top to be able to heat the building up quickly. So again, that, that's totally fair on the engineers. That's, that's, uh, that's probably what they've done. They've set it up for intermittent heating. So when we were doing our heat loss calculations, we, we did a whole building estimate to work out what we think it should need, um, which came in under the 30, 42 kilowatts that we've put in uh, slightly. We we're, were, were, were mid thirties to 40 kilowatts heat loss, but the beauty of this building is, is it has a BMS system, a building management system that controls the whole place. It controls all the HVAC, heating vent and air con. So we knew the run hours, we knew how hard the boilers were running, we knew what temperatures we were running at. And one of the boilers had been condemned by a gas engineer 12 months prior to us servicing it. So it'd been running for a full season on just one 45 kilowatt boiler. So, so we knew that whatever happens, it could cope. We physically had the evidence that it could, could cope with a 45 kilowatt system. But also the BMS 
was running the place fully weather comp and what we mean by weather comp is it compensates the temperature the delivered temperature to the floors and the radiators depending on the outdoor conditions so the colder it gets outside the hotter it'll run the underfloor heating and the warmer it gets outside the cooler it'll run it and in the middle of winter when i did a survey it was touching zero degrees the floor was running with a flow temperature of about 35 well it was 40, 40 degrees flow into it and 35 coming back from it so we knew it was a full low temperature system already running on less than 45 kilowatts so it all tied up with our heat loss calculations and that's the beauty of data if you've got real world data either energy bills so you can see the consumption a bms system so you can actually see digital data of what the run times are and run temperatures it just sends checks those heat loss calculations that we've done so we knew we were right so we're happy to remove the gas completely and that was part of the mission as well for the local authority they wanted to decarbonize this building they've shoved a load of solar on the roof I can't remember exactly how much. I think it's about 50 kilowatts, but I'll check when we're there. We didn't do that. So they've chucked nearly 50 kilowatts of solar on the roof. Three heat pumps, low temperature. That BMS system is going to continue to run it. We've, we've got a BMS engineer in to reprogram it to suit our system um, to, to be able to control the heat pumps weather comp. Um, yeah, and they've. I actually got it running, it's, even though I'm going today just to sign it off, it's been running for, I think it's eight weeks, it was the first week after Christmas we got it all going, and uh, it's been running a treat, 21 degrees in there, not a single complaint about comfort, and, and it was straight into the heating season, harshest weather, you know, as, as you guys all know, January 2025, fair few cold weeks, you know, minus fives, etc., so... Uh, yeah, it's had a good test. Um, I'll be interested to see the efficiency. We do have energy energy monitoring on it, so we can see its COP, its C, you know, its coefficient of performance, or its S COP, which will give us that average over the year, the seasonal coefficient of performance, uh, which is uh, the most important thing, really. Uh, so yeah, I'll uh, take you along and let you have a look. Okey doke. Yeah, so this is the library itself. We've just turned up, so you can see it's a relatively modern building um, by looks, um, 20, 20 years old-ish. Uh, underfloor heating downstairs, radiators upstairs with air conditioning units to do the offices. These are the units themselves, three 14 kilowatt air source heat pumps, uh, three phase units uh, cascaded together into the buffer tank, which I'll show you in the plant room in a minute. Now, what is unique about these units? If you look just over that building there, that is the coast. We're straight onto the sea. We're about four or, four or 500 meters from the sea. As you can see by the plant room door, it's rusting. So what we've done is built these units from full stainless steel. Every bit of it, nuts, bolts, cabin at the lot is stainless steel. So it won't rust. This fencing is here obviously for, um, stopping vandalism uh, people accessing the condensers themselves the evaporators should i say uh, we don't want them getting pierced and then we've used a good quality insulation primary pro insulation on the pipe work to keep all the heat in i'm going to snip these cable ties off now they're not necessary now the adhesive has gone off uh, but that is that they've got condensate drains under each unit to take the condensate away and this uh, new concrete pad Right, so we're currently in the plant room down at uh, the library. I'll just try and walk you through what's in here now and what was here. Um, I'll just drop a photo of the boilers in now. Would have seen here and here. So we've removed those. The flues did go out through this panel there so they've gone and then you'll notice we've also capped the gas off well actually we, the gas meter has been removed completely now so there is no gas connection to this building whatsoever now a lot of the plant that i'm going to show you right now is existing it's not stuff we've got cobwebs in my hair there um it's not stuff we've installed so if it does look dated that's why because it is 20 years old but ultimately what we've got is the bms system here 
so that is what looks after the uh, plant the HVAC in here all the heating ventilation and air conditioning now the council or the local authority has access to this from their central um, database or wh whoever the main manager is for all the buildings in this district they can access that and see whatever information they want at any point the sensors on this building indoor temperature outdoor temperature flow temps etc now what i'm going to show you is um the existing plant well the plant that's going to remain but it is existing and it, a lot of it isn't relevant anymore so what they used to have was variable temperature circuits so these blending valves would blend the heating water from the cascade boiler system that was there blend it down for underfloor heating and radiator temperatures using weather compensation that's the existing uh, underfloor heating circuit there's multiple manifolds in the building not just that one now we've installed this buffer tank because uh, it is a cas cascade system you'll have seen on the um, video when i just turned to the site there's three units set outside so all three are piped separately into this buffer tank here and then you've got your underfloor heating circuit there and your radiator circuit there fed off it now i just wanted to show um how th there's very little distortion on this buffer tank and what we mean by distortion is if you imagine we've got the flows going in the top and the returns going out the bottom and there's the three from the heat pumps going in and the three from the heat pumps going out and then we've got the flow to the radiator circuit and the flow to the underfloor heating circuit off it now we, we want the flows to remain hot at the top and the returns to main cool maintain cool at the bottom we don't want it to mix now if you look on my phone here i've got a smart probe on the um, incoming temperature from the heat pumps and the outgoing to the uh, the underfloor heating and radiators so we've got 38 degrees going in and 37.8 coming out well it's just it's just just moved then to almost within 0 0.1 of a degree so there is literally no distortion whatsoever um on this buffer tank it's running sweet as a knot so the reason why we don't want that distortion is if we have a higher flow temperature going in than what is coming out it means the heat pump's got to flow hotter and hotter to counteract that and obviously the hotter we flow with the heat pump the less efficient it is so it is running perfectly there it's just settling out nicely basically the same temperature and just to show you i've got smart probe there coming in from one of the heat pumps and then i've just taped another one on the flow to the radiators there okay so that is that I don't think there's anything else to show you in here. I'll drop in an image of the energy monitoring. Um, we are currently running at a scop of 3.7 to 3.8. I say scop, um, it, we've not got the full season yet. All we've got is the run data from the start of January to the end of February, which is today, we're, we're basically coming into the last week of February. So it's run for almost eight weeks, but it's run through the worst possible conditions it can be. Uh, it, it's been minus temperatures outside it's the harshest bit of winter so we've not had what we call the shoulder months yet the bits where it's slightly warmer uh, you know your, your october november time and your february march april time where we're still requiring heating but it's warmer so i'm going to expect those efficiencies to creep up also the room temperatures are very warm inside the whole place is at nearly 22 degrees which is incredibly warm for any space but especially a, a space where people come in with their coats on and, and whatnot it doesn't need to be that warm so i'm gonna have a word with the bms guy and get him to tweak the weather comp down get them to tweak the room temperatures down so we can get an even better efficiency we're, we're going to be when we include the shoulder months we're going to be well above four seasonal coefficient of performance uh, which is great that's good so it's ex no no radiator upgrades oh no there was one radiator actually on a landing that we changed from a, a p p plus to a, a k2 i think I'll, I'll i'll drop a picture in of that um but it just shows that an existing heating system uh when run correctly and designed correctly day one um can be converted to a heat pump and get a really good efficiency so uh yeah we're rocking and rolling
So yeah, I've just uh, left the library now. It's great to see it running as well as what it is. That first 12 weeks of running through the harshest conditions um, in the heating season, January, February time, um, they've run really well. Getting that cop of almost 3.8, it will, without any adjustment, work its way up well above four, the COP on that, um, the S-COP on that system. But I've tweaked the weather comp down a bit further. Well, I've got the BMS guy to tweak it down further because the room temperatures are well above 22 degrees, as I said, when I was on site, which is far too warm for that building. So we're going to tweak that down, which will drive that efficiency even further. And that's without even taking into consideration the solar that's on the roof. We've got almost 50 kilowatts of solar there, which is honking power out all the time, which will totally offset any consumption from the units. There's not a lot else of heat demand, of, of energy demand, should I say, in that building. It is just heating, cooling and lighting. There's no big planet in there other than that. So during summer, the solar will be rocking and rolling, running the cooling, um, and in winter, it'll go a hell of a long way to um, cancelling out most of the electric bills. But but there is a saving against gas anyway, because we will be getting that cop above four. So c compared to the electric tariff and the gas tariff, we'll, we'll, be, uh, we'll be saving there. So yeah, a uh, bit of a whistle-stop uh, tour when I was on site. I don't like um, being too invasive in these public buildings because there's meetings going on and um, mother and baby groups and and, and uh, disability groups in there so so it's not fair to go walking around with a camera shoving it in everyone's face so I hope I gave you enough of a, a view of it for you to understand uh, what we've done uh, if there's any questions fire them below and if you do have a chance please like and subscribe and give us a share appreciate it see you next time